The short term reason that the security forces were overrun is that there was a, a collapse in morale. And that collapse in morale followed a heavily advertised um, uh, intention by the US and its NATO partners to leave the country. And I think that had uh, a very deep impact upon Afghan forces uh, who were uh, facing the Taliban. Uh, the longer term reasons uh, are multifold uh, and they include uh, the, the absence of a clear political strategy uh, to inform uh, the uh, military campaign. Uh, the armed forces were perhaps unsustainable, too expensive for Afghanistan to sustain. Uh, they were not necessarily well suited to the character of the country. Plus, of course, what became clear is that the Taliban have been present all around the country for a long time. What's very interesting is there were not large movements of troops uh, before this collapse. They more or less surfaced all around the country. They have been present for a long time. Uh, right now, we have a little bit of a power vacuum. The Taliban are as surprised as anybody else by how quickly this situation has unfolded. They clearly are not ready uh, to assume uh, power and the responsibilities of government. It's another matter whether they have the uh, competence and, and skills to do it. But it's interesting that they are asking the mayor of Kabul, the minister of health to stay in place because uh, there's a vacuum. Uh, and they are scrambling to figure out how they are going to now take responsibility uh, for running the country. I think they have a fairly well-oiled public relations machine that is trying to reassure both the population and the international community uh, that they are not going to um, you know, resort to some of the activities with which they are associated. And I think both Afghans, particularly young people and women and those in professions uh, which are deemed more or less unacceptable to the Taliban, they are right to be skeptical about this. Because no matter what the political leadership says, the uh, commanders on the ground and the young foot soldiers uh, are going to do what they have been trained to do, what they know how to do, and what uh, they they have been encouraged to do over the last uh, ten or, or twenty years. I think the priorities immediately are number one to uh, protect those who are most vulnerable and offer them safe passage. Number two, to facilitate humanitarian access uh, uh, and increase the level of humanitarian support. And number three, to look at the basis upon which services such as electricity, water, uh, and even policing can be maintained. There are many European politicians, including in Germany, who are saying that assistance to Afghanistan should end uh, because um, not so much humanitarian, but development assistance should end because of the Taliban's policies and practices. And yet we know if that happens, that is likely to increase uh, the humanitarian problem. It will only increase uh, the likelihood that people will try and leave the country uh, and many of them will try and head not only to the region but to Europe. I think the other thing I would say is that the international community, particularly the West, uh, has a number of points of leverage over the Taliban, but these should not be exaggerated. Uh, one is international recognition for the Taliban, which they want, uh, and it remains to be seen whether there will be international solidarity, whether what the Europeans and North Americans say will also be the same position as taken by the regional players. Uh, a second um, point of leverage is money uh, and the degree to which uh, money will continue to be available. And the third thing is continued military engagement, whether by the United States uh, or NATO. Uh, I don't think the Taliban that want to, want that to continue. Obviously, you know they need to demonstrate that they're very serious about Afghanistan not being used 
uh, as a place from which terrorists and extremist activities continue. The first thing is let, let, let's let the dust settle a bit because people can rush to conclusions very quickly. Having said that, it is clearly the case that this uh, fiasco is going to have uh, consequences all around the world. I mean, I think I, I already know from conversations in the last few days that what's happening in Afghanistan is being, very, is being followed very closely by other jihadi groups in the Middle East, in the Horn, in the Sahel. Uh, there are also um, governments and other groups who are supported by the US and its allies who are now wondering whether they can rely upon that support you know, or whether they too uh, might, as it were, in their words, be abandoned. There is this idea that jihadi groups should uh, try and convert uh, the achievement of their political objectives from military activity to political negotiations. Well, if the lesson from Afghanistan is, you know, uh, once you've got a deal with the US or whoever, you don't need to sign a political agreement because you can achieve your objectives militarily, that is going to have a very big impact uh, on, uh, uh, on many places in the world. I mean, I think one of the things that we would like to see, and unfortunately is not the case, is much uh, more muscular action by the UN Security Council. That has been uh, conspicuously lacking. There is a lack of international coherence in terms of uh, dealing with this problem. And if anything, uh, you know, Afghanistan for many, many decades, if not centuries, has been a place where great powers, you know, play out their rivalries. Uh, and this is the last thing that Afghanistan needs. Uh, uh, I think one of the biggest lessons from this is a failure to put uh, the needs, including the security concerns of people front and center. This has been secondary. Uh, and there has been a failure to understand the dynamics of Afghan society. There's been a failure to understand, um, you know, how uh, traditional governance works, uh, the history of the country, uh, the importance of different forms of identity when you're building institutions and so on. Uh, and that has been uh, very, very bad news uh, for the way the international community has uh, engaged. What we need is a different form of engagement, not to end the engagement and concentrate the military. You need a different way of doing things that puts people at the center and not out of some romantic idea, but it's because it's practical. That's the way you can achieve results. You know, they're going to be much more responsive to what the population wants than what Western politicians want. Uh, having, you know, because they see Western politicians as behind 20 years of of bombing them, you know, whereas they do need communities to support them. So the issue is how can you build upon what it is that ordinary people want? Um, you know, that's, that's a, it's a much slower and more painful way of doing things, but it's a much more sustainable way of doing things.